Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks, it's Sega262, and tonight I just have a really quick video. Um, it's going to be probably as short as my Armored Warfare News video, if you haven't seen that, please check it out. Um, and that's because, one, I just want to continue making videos. Uh, first things first, thank you, nobody, <laughs> for the Chrysler K I didn't get. <laughs> but that event is over. I wanted to keep it in my garage, I didn't play any more battles after the video just to see if it would stay here for a full 20 battles, and yeah, it does, so that's great, hopefully you guys still have one and you can enjoy it. Second thing, I wanted to say thank you to all my viewers, all my subscribers, I know there's been a couple of new ones who, I think it's like half a dozen people or so who continue to watch my World of Tanks videos, they continue to comment on them, you know, interact with me, and show support and I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys it really means a lot to me and so I'm going to try to be making a lot more World of Tank content probably less gameplay and more videos like this which are just going to be quick little things but a huge thank you to all of you guys I really do appreciate it and now today I want to talk about free to play the free to play mechanics what a premium account really is is it important that sort of thing why I don't play high tiers why I don't go for tier 9s or tier 10s, I have none after 6 years, why I just don't do it, when a lot of people do, and not all of that is because of premium time, but this little session statistics has given me a really great way to show you guys something. So if you see here, I played 9 games, and 9 games, I made 90,000 credits. That's not that great, it's like 10,000 credits a game. And that's because of things like repair cost, ammunition. Uh, if I have a really bad game or a bad team, which I've been having bad luck all night tonight before I made this video, just teams folding. That's why it's only about 10,000 a game and you should be making way more. The second thing I want you to see is total credits actually earned is only 38,000. That's less than 50% of the credits that I actually earned after all those expenses. It's 38,000. Now, why is that such a big deal? That's because the reason is is that high tier vehicles become unplayable when it's free to play. Now, if you have premium, you make 50% more credits and experience. And a lot of people play on a premium account. That's just how you're expected to play World of Tanks. But it gives you the option to be free to play. I've always been strict free to play. That means no consumables like repair kits, no food, no special equipment I can't afford. That's why it took me so long to get those 40 million credits. And for a lot of people, you know, they see a player that's just not doing as well for so many years. But the reason is, is that I can tell you right now, two games tonight I got completely obliterated simply because I didn't have a repair kit because that's 20,000 credits every time you use one and when you're making only 10,000 a game to begin with because you don't have the premium boost that means you could have games where you make zero dollars just because you need to repair your tracks and while I wish the economics of how those consumables worked would change and roar gaming would do something different with them I don't actually control that and so for anybody out there who's not doing as well, not making enough money, not going through all these tiers and just ranking up as fast. That could be the problem is that you're on free to play and don't worry about it, it happens to everybody. I've been doing this six years and it's never gotten better. The economics have never changed and so you're almost punished for playing free to play. It's very difficult to make money. Now, when I say it's very difficult, it is certainly not impossible. And that's where my next thing comes in. The reason I was able to do so much and do so well for a little bit is that I stopped grinding and going up tiers at tier 8. I have a bunch of tier 8s, I barely play. And I started playing, well, I started doing two things. One, I only played vehicles I was really good in, but not just really good, but I knew had lower shell cost. So that way I could maximize my profit in battle and make this number go up. Two, like you can see with the King Tiger here, I started playing with premium tanks. I have a lot of premium tanks. Now I bought a lot of these over many, many years. I obviously didn't just start buying premium tanks right off the bat because if I did that, then essentially I could have just bought, for all the premium tanks I have, 30 
Um, I could have bought multiple years of premium time, but a lot of these are event tanks, tanks that I won, gifts, uh, rentals, you know, and some of them are as old. Like this one I got six years ago when I first started playing. I started with the RAM. So it's just a lot of tanks over time. But if you play these, you can make more credits because these vehicles carry that 50% credit, 50% experience bonus from premium accounts over. Now you don't get to reap that reward, it's, you know, when it's not, sorry, you do get to reap the reward. I meant you don't get to stack it like premium tanks are supposed to. Why you see more people play premium tanks to train crews is because when they have a premium account, it stacks. Obviously, you don't get those benefits, but it's almost like playing normal. Like what everybody else is doing who has a premium account, when you play a premium tank, you're now playing at the same level as them. And so they gave away some premium time at the beginning of the D Day event. Those are some great days. And now Watt Premium does something even better where I made, I think, 52,000, 60,000 credits in a week just for free. They just give it to you. They put money away after every game. You get an extra 10% added onto that 50 but instead of making 60% credit they take that 10 and just like and don't quote me on that I don't know if it's exactly 10% I'm just guessing and they put it away in a safe and then you get to access it and I'll actually show you if you don't have a premium account you can see this they put it in reserve stock and so every week you can make up to 750,000 credits now oh, here it is 50 per, plus 50% experience plus 50, so there you have the numbers there um, and, okay, yeah, here you go. It gives you the session statistics here. So I made 90,000 credits tonight. I would have made 135,000, or after all my bad games, I would have still walked away with 72,000 credits instead of 38. And that's why it's so hard and why t high tiers are impossible. Not only are they more competitive, and it's harder to penetrate because you need to use special ammunition. But when you're talking about rounds that cost 4,400, that's actually pretty low for tier 7. 4,400 credits a round, if you miss a shot or if you bounce one, that could be a whole game-changing moment where you lose a lot of your profit just in one round. And so all of a sudden, playing vehicles that are really good at tier 8, really strong tier 8 vehicles, like my IS-3, which is, as you can see, it has a win rate of only 45%, or the KV-439, or my VK-100, one of the best tier 8 tanks. The reason I never play them, if you've seen me online, I know a couple of you guys have already played with me, I will never be in tier 8, and the reason is ammunition. It's a thousand rounds of shell, which is standard from tier 7 upwards for German tanks, it's not hard to really beat, but I have to fire almost the entire volume of 37 shells, especially when I see tier 10s, because they just don't have the penetration, and I'm not going to pay almost 5,000 credits a shell for the special rounds to actually penetrate tier 10 targets, and so I end up wasting about 38,000 credits in battle just on ammunition alone, and it's service costs, which... I can't see here because it's not damaged, but is pretty high to service tier 8 vehicles. I think it's like four or 5,000 credits right off the bat. And so if you die at tier 8, especially if you're fighting a lot like I do when I'm in a heavy because you haul down and you just start lobbing shells at people, and in vehicles like the VK or the IS-3, a lot of those shells miss, all of a sudden you can have a game where if you die you're starting at negative 38,000 in your profit margin. And if you lose the game, you make 50% less than what you would have if you won. So now you are ending up playing, and this has happened to me all too often, you're in games at tier 8 where you are paying Wargaming 5, 10, 20,000 credits that you don't have because of your team, because of the poor situations, because of missing shells. And so it all of a sudden it becomes impossible to maintain good economics while playing at high tiers. And now, you can obviously do it without a premium account. Obviously, I have all these premium vehicles. The reason I play these vehicles a little bit is that my system is for every one or two.
I play at least three or four in a premium tank to offset it. But, and I know this video is already pretty long, so I'm going to cut it short here. This is really all it was about, is that for free-to-play players, if it's so hard, or it is so hard, and then, you know, a lot of new players leave because they realize right away you do need a premium account to stay competitive. And that's why I recommend just playing for fun. That's what I do. Free-to-play is very difficult to you know grind up tiers it's very difficult to make your money back it's very difficult to buy newer and higher tier tanks free to play and the premium mechanic and all the tanks is so vastly different the gap is so huge that you could be great at free to play and never ever touch a basic premium players stats in terms of you know money made win rate because you're using special ammunition or you're using consumables like repair kits that we could stay in battle longer and be more efficient that they are using that you can't because you can't afford it. And now it's not all doom and gloom. You can choose to, you know, spend money however you like. Um, it is all these resources are still available to you in free to play. I'm making it sound like they're not. They are, but like I was saying with the special ammunition or the repair kits, they're very expensive. Without that premium bonus, you're going to see those things start to really chip away at how much money you can make, which, while you might have some really great gains, will start limiting which vehicles you can purchase and which upgrades you can purchase for those vehicles, making them even less competitive. And so, long story short, the premium mechanic in World of Tanks, if you're on the fence about it, really does make a huge difference. But if you are a new player, and you're struggling, you're really struggling, and you don't know why it's not the game it's not you you're not a bad player it could just be that you're on a free-to-play account and it's just going to be harder for you to do things harder is not impossible but just know that and if you feel like having the premium account is worth it i encourage you to get one because it really is a massive massive difference to how the game is played take it from me i've been here forever and I have not even begun to chip away at any tier 9s because I just cannot economically support a single tier 8 heavy tank without premium vehicle support. It's really hard to do that. And it's just going to be, it's not going to be a bad time. I have a lot of fun playing World of Tanks. But just, you know, be aware. I know that we're losing a lot of new players to various things. I know I made a video about the community and is it really that toxic? I didn't think it was, but I think this impacts new players more than the community. It is the difference between a premium account and a standard account, and how much of a difference premium really plays. If you can't afford premium, which I couldn't for a long time. When I first started, I couldn't afford premium, so I just played without it. It makes grinding almost impossible. Anyway, sorry for the long-winded tirade explaining that, especially to, you know, seasoned World of Tank players even players that have been around for a little bit who know that sorry that I made this whole video just a drawn out explanation but if you enjoyed it because you're a new player you didn't really know about this please give it a thumbs up if you want to get notified on any of my next uh, play days that I'm going to record or vehicle showcases that I'm going to do instead of vehicle reviews just old tanks that I already own but like a lot uh, I might even throw in an economic factor to help you guys out if you want to see videos like that, please tell me in the comments below where I'll try to break down which free-to-play tanks are best to use to get you the most profit or just for a better playing experience. As always, if you want notifications for any of those things, please subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way to helping me make more videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a well, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.